My name is Eric. I'm the president of the Student High Tech Club at Pepperdine University, part of our MBA program up in Malibu and here in West LA. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors, our, our club, and our members raised some money for this, as well as uh, two other clubs, the Entertainment Club at school and the uh, Marketing Society as well, and of course uh, the IGBA and, and Super So I'd like to thank all of them for their donations. We do have a couple of changes. Uh, Mike Peltier, a uh, friend of mine from Activision, was not able to make it. Said that he had to fly off last minute to DC, but we have a wonderful replacement. Um, I'd like to hand off the mic to Louise to talk a little bit about the IGDA, if you're not familiar with that group. And then off to Sue, who will introduce the speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Hi, I'm Louise Nemshoff, and I'm a member of the board of the IGDA Los Angeles chapter. Uh, which is co-sponsoring this event. Thank you all very much for coming. Um, you probably are all familiar with the IGDA, if, if you are or are not members. Um, the, our chapter uh, is pretty much at this point open to anyone. Um, and you can find information about our events by signing up on our, is it the Facebook page? Well, we have a Facebook page, we have a Twitter, and we also have a page on the IGDA.org site, which is, I think, where the official sign-up is. Um, I should also mention that we do offer a discount for the upcoming LA Games Conference on April 24th, and for the Digital Kids Conference on April 25th and 26th. So this is just some of the benefits that you get with um, our membership. Um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Sue Bola, who is really um, one of the top marketing gurus in the video game business, and her company, the Bola Company, is one of our sponsors. So, and she'll introduce the rest of the panel, so please welcome Sue. so that we can uh, hopefully move this to the speaking around and you can all hear us. If, you, if anybody has any trouble hearing, just let us know. So tonight, the panel is on getting a job in marketing in the game industry. After moving around the room, I'm not sure all of you want a game marketing position, but there are a lot of interesting people here who maybe you will learn from our sharing our experience. But that is the topic of the of the evening and I'm going to ask each of the panelists a few questions and then let the everyone here just ask whatever question you'd like. My own personal background, um, I run a public relations firm as Louise said and we got into the game industry in the mid 80s so we've really been around a long time. I think probably the first public relations agency to specialize in games and it was by accident. Um, I thought it would be really a fun kind of activity. We started out as a tech firm I'm oh, sorry, I thought it was me. <laughs> um, I, I should maybe start off a little bit before that. Um, I worked five years for a big national PR firm, Mercer Marsteller, then five years for J. Walter Thompson, so I had an experience within an ad agency, and then I got the opportunity to start my own firm. I decided to focus on tech, and I started working for the Silicon Valley companies, and we helped a company um, in the middle of the PC movement uh, make a lot of money by selling out and he went back to Atari and brought us in there and that's how we originally got an Atari. So um, this was the dying days of Atari but still in the early days of the video game business and I just thought well this is a fun kind of area of public relations that the guys in the office would like and then from there it just evolved and evolved. We launched several game systems, we worked for a lot of software startups, um, game company startup studios and the large publishers and now we are really focused a lot on helping with the whole movement of downloadable games that, and that, that are in, um, being done again by startups. Um, it's just kind of fun, funny how the whole thing happens. Uh, we've been a hardcore game agency, but recently we've done more in the social media space. And, and about two years ago, I, I, having been a former teacher before I even started in the video game business, um, I got interested in educational games. And so we've actually started a serious games association. Uh, which I will evolve to when I decide I'm going to hang up my hat and not do public relations anymore. So that's my history, and I'd like each of the 
panelists to tell you theirs so that you can see how they evolved from whatever they were thinking they were doing into a marketing job at games. So Amy, why don't you start? Okay, I'm Amy from Motion. I'm the VP of the video game department. It is a creative agency um, that specifically focuses in entertainment. So there is a film group, a broadcast group, and a gaming group, which is my group. I had no idea I was going to end up in video games. It was completely random. Um, my degree from university was entertainment management. I knew I wanted to work in the arts, and I knew I wanted to be on the management side of it. And then I ended up in community service and teaching. I don't know how that happened. Um, and when I transferred with a job out here, I hated it so much that I quit. And I was at a VP level, actually, at that company. And then I quit, and then I started as a PA back at a video game company because I got placed there because of my degree. Totally a random placement, but within two to three years, I was running my department. It was actually Vivendi just over here. Um, I used to run the internal video department at a publisher, so we did so many behind the scenes and walkthroughs and TV spots and trailers. Like That's just all we did all the time for all of our games, for every conference, for everything. So with the merger with Activision, they let most of us go, which surprisingly was very hard for me emotionally, but very good for me professionally, because everybody I knew went to different groups. And so when I went to go interview at companies, they were very interested in my contacts, which I'm sure we'll be talking about later, about a lot of it's about who you know. And um, I started the department there from scratch, and they had nothing. And within a couple of years, they were doing one and a half million dollars worth of work. And I love my job, and I love the game industry because everyone's young, innovative, exciting, fun, geeky, and I couldn't think of a better place to be. Thank you. Melinda. Hi, my name is Belinda Van Sickle, and um, I got into the video game industry also kind of random. I was a grad student up in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area working in uh, a master's program in creative writing, working on a screenplay. Um, before I finished grad school, I was in my final semester finishing my orals and all that kind of stuff, and um, I had my thesis done, a screenplay, and so I moved to Los Angeles to shop around my screenplay while at the same time working in advertising. I, uh, my stepmother was in advertising, had been for 25 years, was pretty high up in um, her companies, had been um, a professional in uh, the APALA, which is the Advertising Protection Association of Los Angeles. So she had a lot of contacts and was able to find me a job even while I was still up north in, in grad school. So I moved to LA, started working in advertising project management on a number of different clients, while at the same time shopping around my finished screenplay and the treatment for two other um, uh, projects that I was working on. And all I can say is um, I, was, uh, I went to UC Santa Cruz as an undergrad and Sonoma State University as a graduate student, and uh, I was the only screenwriter in the county, it seemed like. <laughs> I moved to Santa Monica, and everybody in the freaking Starbucks is working on a screenplay. <laughs> I'm walking down the frozen food aisle in Ralph's, and people are discussing their screenplay on a cell phone. I mean, it was so incredibly demoralizing, I couldn't believe it. And um, I really had very, very hard time just getting anyone to talk to me about my screenplay, nonetheless, nonetheless represent me. And um, so I continued working in advertising, freelancing at a number of client side and agency side companies. And after two years doing that, um, I miraculously got hired at a company called Activision. And my um, title, and that, the job was advertised in the back of Adweek magazine. And my title there was a uh, documentation writer slash production artist. And um, what I was doing there is I was in charge of all, I don't know why I'm doing this, but <laughs> I, was, uh, I was in charge of all um, game manual copy as well as design and layout for game manual. So I was working in the packaging department. And we continued in that department, um, the creative services department at Activision for another two and a half years while I was there. And that was around the time when Activision was really focusing on being a global publisher and not so much a developer. So they were spinning off dev departments. They started Pandemic Studios. They started Savage Entertainment. They were buying um, uh, people who had been affiliated with them. And they were spinning off internal departments in order to be able to not necessarily have a single group doing their advertising. So my company spun off and formed an, an, an uh, advertising agency focused on um, video games. And I continued to work there for six and a half years. And it was really great for the first, two year, first few years 
years, my department was the only department that were able to keep all of Activision's business for six and a half years while we lost most of uh, the rest of it for the other departments. But I could tell that my company was really not interested in, in, in staying in the video game realm. And I knew that that's where I wanted to be. I didn't want to be doing ads for the Lakers or whatever, whatever, whatever. I wanted to be in the video game industry because same thing as Amy, I got into this company at Activision and I walked around here and I had been freelancing for two years and I was walking around that building thinking, oh my God, this place is full of smart, creative geeks. <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> um, and it wasn't, it wasn't like the film industry where I didn't perceive um, smart, creative, or geek much at all. <laughs> so um, I uh, left uh, my company in 2005 and started my own business, um, specifically servicing marketing materials for the game industry. At that time I got involved with Women in Games International and helped to grow that organization from about 300 to over 4,000 and became the CEO of that organization and have been in business myself with my own company for six and a half years doing uh, packaging, advertising, strategy, planning, and marketing services for um, a number of startups as well as major publishers. And um, I love the game industry. I don't want to go anywhere else. And I'm looking for my toward my future in that career. Thank you. All right, Rob. Uh, my name is Rob. I work with at a bowl company with Sue. Uh, I've been working there for about a year and a half now. Uh, I went to Sonoma State University as well for my undergrad. And uh, after that, uh, as I was wrapping it up, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do, what direction I wanted to head. So I spent a year in AmeriCorps working uh, in Santa Rosa, helping out some underprivileged grade school kids, environmental cleanup, all that stuff. Uh, after that, I got into uh, some marketing, just small uh, jobs looking for, uh, just something by my time. Uh, I did uh, like marketing for, uh, it was a food business, and then, uh, Wow. <laughs> Go farther away from your mouth, I think. Nope. So after that, uh, I saw an internship actually uh, at the, for the Bowl Company. I uh, applied for that, I got in there, and I just really fell in love with the job. I couldn't imagine really doing anything else. I started just working nonstop, 12 hour days. It started off low pay, but it was something I was passionate about, I really wanted to stick with, just because it was an internship. Uh, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to advance there fairly quickly. Uh, I think that's primarily due to, uh, I don't like to consider myself the smartest person, because Sue and uh, our vice president are very intelligent, they're great resources. The, I get, if I work at like a in-house public relations agency, you, they tend to stick you in a corner, give you one job and you stick doing that. You don't really get a lot of variety in your job. Uh, what I get to do is, I get to pick her brain constantly, learn more every day, which is a fantastic experience. You can't really get a whole lot of agencies. Uh, well, at the Bowl Company, I've worked with a wide range of clients, everything from the IGDA, uh, the IndyK Festival, uh, the Penny Arcade, as well as a bunch of developers from two-man operations working in their garage to like million dollar uh, budget operations. Uh, so that's about my experience. Okay, thanks, Rob. Um, I thought we'd, the second question that we would have the panel do is, um, all of us are, have been in hiring positions, even Rob, um, and doing new interns. I thought I would ask each of the panel members to talk about when you see a resume or you see a cover letter, what impresses you and what turns you off? Maybe Rob, you start this time and hold the mic a little farther. Away. <laughs> so when I receive a resume and a cover letter, uh, I like to see good writing style and they personalize their uh, letter. Uh, you can definitely tell when somebody's just sending the same cover letter, same resume to everybody. If you can really tailor to that company, do some research on the clients that they represent, that's fantastic. Uh, some of the things I don't recommend doing, we actually got a resume the other day where the guy included his uh, headshot and he had his shirt unbuttoned very, fairly far down. That's not very professional. Maybe if you're applying for something in Hollywood like entertainment, but not really for the game space. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm primarily looking for good writing, somebody who's passionate and who really cares about what they do. That can really come across on a cover letter. You can sell from some when people are just, they're looking for a job, they're not looking for like a career. 
And that's primarily what I look for, somebody who can differentiate themselves from the crowd, because we get hundreds of resumes, people looking for a job, because people are very excited, the possibility to work in the game space, just like I'm sure as many of you are, and I'm sure as many of you are feel that just passionate about your job that you currently have. Um, I would like to echo his, um, his same things about um, personalizing your cover letter and even personalizing your resume. And let's keep in mind that when you're a hiring manager, you're not the person who hires people. You're the person who vets people. So the kind of time that you spend on a resume and on a cover letter, I mean, honestly, on a cover letter, you don't even get to the resume is. I think I was just reading an article today, six seconds. And it was an interesting article um, where it actually showed um, there was a study done where the eye movements of hiring managers were actually tested as they looked at certain resumes and where they went with the same information on one resume as versus the same information on another. And um, I, to start with the cover letter, though, definitely know it, the the uh, you know the, the keep in mind. Okay, you have one job. You have a minimum of a hundred resumes. Your first thing as a hiring manager, or even, even if you're in a small company, you're the producer hiring member of your team, is to get rid of 70 of those. Delete 70 of those. How much time do you think they're going to spend to delete 70 of those? Do you think they're going to spend 70 minutes? They're not going to spend 70 minutes deleting 70 of those. They're going to spend 30 minutes deleting of those. They're going to skim through that cover letter, and they're going to see things that are not relevant to their job, that are general, that are generic, that are just uh, blah, 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 I am a great person, I am a self-starter, I have huge amounts of enthusiasm, and if you give me a chance, I'll be the best employee ever. Anybody could say that about a job at McDonald's or a job at Boeing. It doesn't mean anything to anybody. What you really want to spend your time and energy doing in your cover letter is getting them past that 70% deletion. You want to get into that 30, 30 people out of 100 that they're actually going to look at the resume. They're going to skim that resume, and then they're going to try to delete another 15. Then they're going to look more closely at those 15, and they're going to call 10 people. And then they're going to bring in three to five for interviews. So out of 100, 70 deleted, um, 15 deleted uh, pretty quickly, five of them deleted sooner than that, 10 of them get calls. So you want to be in that 3% that gets in the door, you are going to have to be really, really, really pointed at the job. And the way that I do that is not only do I want to tell them about who I am, but it's really, really, they don't care about who you are. They care about what value you bring to the company. They care about how you can fulfill the needs that they have. If you're, in, if you're a hiring manager, your job is to do what your client, which is an internal client in the company, wants. I want someone who has this, 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 and this skills. So you're a hiring manager and thinking, my job is to find someone with this, this, and this skills. And you need to get past um, the 70% deleted and really, really speak to the ad. Really, really read these ads. I mean, these ads have a lot, a lot, a lot of clues in them. And if you look over them and look over them and look over them and really, really figure out what the heck they're saying and then speak to that. But don't speak to that in a parroting manner saying, yes, I do P&L and blah, 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 you know, the same way they would a bullet point. But talk about your experience. Really talk to them because they're looking for someone who can, who can not only do what their job is, which is to fulfill the needs of the people who are actually looking, the team members who are actually looking to get to those, um, those uh, a hire, but that's, which is your job as a hiring manager. But also, how can you provide value to the company? It's not about you. Keep in mind, your resume and your cover letter are not about you. They are about the job that you want. So you really, really need to tailor things. And I know how tedious it is. And I know how difficult it is. And I, and you know, I spend a lot of time working on really, really smart, well-written things. You know, with my master's in creative writing, I'm just like, well, well, well I'm the greatest thing ever. You should fire me. But um, what value does that provide to any company? Well, 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 I'm the greatest thing in the world, and uh, you should hire me. Name me one dollar worth of value that provides to any company. Not, not a single. <laughs> my set favorites are, hi, my name is, I can read at the end of the letter. <laughs> um, and the other one is the, the person who doesn't even 
he, he wants you to tell him more about the job before he's going to respond to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't. Yeah. Don't act like um, like you, like you when you get into the interview room. That's when you're interviewing the company to find out if it's the right fit for you. But when you're in the cover letter, you are proving, 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 proving your value. And then when you get to your resume, it's all about. Readability. That's one thing I've learned in, in working in video game manuals and packaging for many years. I work, I've, I've written and worked on and designed hundreds and hundreds of video game manuals. Who reads video game manuals? Who plays video games? Raise your hand. <laughs> Go nerds! Um, but, you know, what I know as, as a person who reads a video game manual, I know that no one reads it from cover to cover. They skim through it to find the stuff that they want that gets them to the next spot because all they want to do is be playing the game. So when I write and I work and I work with my teams to write a video game manual, I absolutely think about how can I pro provide the information that the people want in the way that easiest possible way for them to get it. And these are the things you need to think about in your resume. So they want to see job titles that are resident or that are relevant to men, relevant to them. They want to see education that's relevant to them. And they want it to be easy to find. And so um, don't bury it. Don't make them have to look at the name of your company, the dates you've been there, and the college that you want to. Because you know what? The name of your company, the dates that you've been there, and the college that you want to don't provide any value for jobs, titles, skills things you've done, solutions, problems that you've solved. Those are the things that hiring managers are looking for. Um, about your value, I, I've got a lot of pet peeves, actually, about resumes, um, <laughs> which is horrible. Um, for the value of reading through your resume, I do believe bullet points, don't put paragraphs on there. Nobody's going to read that shit. Nobody, not even your mom is going to read that. You don't put it on there. Um, I also like it when people on their resumes, if it's a company that you don't know what it is, on my resume I have like a one sentence description of what that company does, like if it's outside of the industry so they can maybe figure out how it could apply to the new position. Um, oh my god, I had so many things as you were talking, I was like, I do this, How about that. typos? Do not have typos. Yeah, don't have typos. Yeah, that's super low class. Um, <laughs> Most of the people will just chunk the resume if you have a typo. Yeah, and once you get to a certain point in your career, stop putting your education at the top. <laughs> yeah, and you know, a lot of people, for me, about your value too, is in those bullet points, like, I manage the day-to-day -day blah, blah, blah. That's not very helpful, especially when you're getting into the, to the lower ranks of the industry. It's like, I was responsible for 10 people's timesheets that were due weekly, and I calculated blah, blah, blah. I like numbers, like, how many can you do in a week? How many projects can you manage at a time? Um, I also personally like to see that people are engaged in their industry. Like, if you're not working, then you better be volunteering at any case. You better, you know, those are the things I want to see on your resume. If you're really trying to break in, then be involved in the community. And don't just say, I'm a member of, I remember because I'm on the executive team with um, Belinda, and I was interviewing somebody, and they're like, oh, I'm really active in Wiggy. And I was like, bitch, I don't know if you were active in Wiggy because I'm not And, you know, it's like, so, you know, don't lie to people either or, you know, expand your experience just because you think it's, you're going to be there. But, like, if you're engaged and you really give a crap about the industry that I really care about, that's got to come through on your resume by your experience. And if there's something that's not relevant on there, kick it off there. If something is more relevant, like, you know, I ran this project at IGDA or whatever it is. Um, I also think in a cover letter, something that would be interesting to me is if somebody researched my company and then wrote me a cover letter to say, blah, 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 you know, I'm really interested in this position, and I read this article, and I would love to know, you know, or like see things like this applied in advertising moving forward, or like to see that they actually read, that they keep up on the trades, that they know what's going on, rather than, I'm this, and my mom does this, and we do this, and blah, 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 and please hire me because I'm awesome. It's like, I put some critical thinking in how marketing video games is moving forward. Here's some great things that I've thought about. Hopefully I'll get to come into an interview and talk about those things with you additionally to this position. So that's the, those are the kind of people that I hire. Everybody on my staff, like one used to write a Sony blog, the other guy actually builds arcade systems like in his garage on the weekends. Like everybody's really into it because if you're not enthusiastic about it, your your projects aren't gonna show it. So those are things that I like as a hiring manager. All right, one last question. Um, let's make this a little brief because we want to leave time for questions. But in when someone comes in for the interview, what turns you on about that candidate? Uh, sure. So. If someone comes in for an interview, I'd like to see somebody who's well prepared. 
obviously you got to come dress professional. Some you all know that, but you'd be amazed at the amount of people who come in there looking like a slob. Uh, or conversely, like a suit, because we're really not that formal as an independent. Absolutely. Uh, another thing that uh, I'd really like to see for any candidate that comes in there is once we you've uh, we've responded to you, you have our root domain, so it's at bola.com. Obviously, next up, go to bola.com, the website. Check out what we're about. See some of our clients, so you can come in there and say, "Oh, I've played this game in the past. Uh, I'm very familiar with X and X amount of work." It's some very similar stuff to the cover letter, just because once you respond, you have more information about us. So you need to expand upon that, your research, and become more tailored uh, with your responses. Um, I definitely would echo that as well, and I'd actually like to talk about a, a recent um, experience that I had in an interview. Um, I was interviewing at a company called Gaikai, I think you've probably heard about it, a lot of you hopefully, and um, you know, of course, I read. I've been reading about Gaikai for many, many months and months. But I really, really, really researched every single, single thing I possibly could about the company. And very recently, before my interview, there was a great interview with with two of the principals, like you know, this kind of question and answer interview. You know, you know, interviewee person, interviewee person, interviewee person. And some of the things that you know the people that I was interviewing had to say on there were fascinating to me, and I was ready and in that interview say I really liked what you said in the industry gamers interview I was really really fascinated with the fact that you you know do this and, and go over here to do this that's really really cool I'm impressed with that that's something I'm excited about but what I had another question about something else that was said in that interview that was this I didn't really I didn't really understand what that meant and you know maybe it was the editing or whatever but can you explain it a little bit toward me to me and I mean these people are like wow you are not only paying attention to our company, to where we're going, but you're listening to me. You're listening to what I said. You are plugged into something that I'm about. And this is a CEO of a major company, and actually, if you know the CEO of Gaikai, he is a video game industry icon. And um, you know, I've done that with other companies. You know, it's like I've looked at what they've done. I thought I read their entire website. I read their press releases. I read their press. I look around and see really what they're about, and come into the interview ready to ready to ask questions. Because you know, one of the things that they tell you the you know HR police tell you in in uh, the world is you know come to an interview ready to interview them you know and of course you have the, the standard questions like what's your benefits package and blah 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 but what's an interview that that's going to be more compelling to those people talking about their benefits package from a C-level executive you know they're like yeah you talk to my HR department I don't even care talking about about where the company is going, some of the some of the key key changes that they've made, some of the key technology advances that they're looking for, some of the key um, you know, for instance, that they just got out of CES and they had a they had a, a showing at CES and I wanted to talk to them about, well, this is interesting what you did at CES and I had a question about how is that working over there and what what is your deal and where are you going forward with this and really really super super relevant stuff that these people are working on every day that is really really important to the company. So when you go in and you enter interview the company, don't just interview them about the stuff that's, you know, where am I going to be sitting and who am I going to be working, um, you know, for and what's the, what's the um, you know, the hierarchy structure and, you know, all of those kinds of things. That's an interview. Those are things that are important, I would say, in the second or third interview. The first interview is you want to let these people know that I care about you. I am paying attention to what you're doing. I am engaged and interested and fascinated with where your company is going, what your um, business model models are, what your um, current and upcoming revenue streams are, and I want to find out more about it. And just ask. I mean, and the fact is, be a better interviewer of them than they do on Game of on Industry Gamers, on Game Biz Daily, or whatever the different um, publications that you're looking at, because you've got them right there, and you're not going to be giving them a whole little thing that's for the mass media. But talk about the things that you're really interested in. So when you get in that interview, be there and be ready to to interview them, but not just about you, about them. That's good. I don't like ego. <laughs> I really, I, I interviewed so many creative directors and I was like, if I have to come to work with you every day, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> because just because they, it's not like they couldn't do a good job, but it was like, I don't want to go to client lunches with you because I'm going to be embarrassed of you because you're a jerk. So a lot of people are like, don't be a jerk because you never know who you're talking to. Don't be a jerk because don't be a jerk. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because in this industry, your network and your professional, and in any industry, your professional reputation is all that you have. 
And you know, if you put your best self forward in an interview or at a networking event, because a networking event is kind of like a little mini interview. It's like, you know, I met that person and I really dug them and we had this great conversation and they're really engaged in like what's going on and um, you know, so in an, in an interview, I just like people who are engaged, who are modest, but still proud of their accomplishments, but not like, I can do whatever. It's like, you know, I hear that you guys are doing this. It's a little new for me. I've actually read that this was successful at another company. Have you guys ever considered that? You know, applying not just about their company, which is what Belinda was saying, but like, what are their competitors doing? You know, and saying, you know, like, I thought about this, and, I, and I'm really interested to bring this edge to your company, or whatever. So that's... That would be a like A plus plus interview for me, is if somebody was like super engaged, had the right questions, um, showed that they were going to add value. Like I don't want to have to educate you in the games industry if I hire you. Like I want you to bring value to me and to, like let me hear about stuff that I wouldn't have thought about. So that's that's what I would really like. All anyway. right, let me turn it off to the audience. Does anyone have a question of the panel? Yes. Um, you have to speak up really loud because you don't have the mic. We do. No problem. Uh, I wanted to know a little bit about analytics and the uh, marketing groups. Do you guys use analytics, like uh, any regression modeling, any kind of Google analytics, web analytics to track marketing dollars? Is that something that marketing industry is moving towards? Everybody loves their metrics. Everybody loves their info. Um, I find that my clients are usually the ones that are running most of their information unless I'm pulling together research for specifically their product. But they typically track that. For, like, I, don't, I don't really do that personally, but and I know that certain companies have brand managers that just do that, Why other companies have brand managers that specifically run creative and all this other stuff, so it really kind of depends on the brand manager that you're working with, but um, I know they all love it, they do follow it, they absolutely want to see. I don't really know how um, uh, accurate a lot of that is and how much weight you can put in it, but people I know love there. And as far as public relations, it will be at the national um, PR firm level or in-house at the major publishers. Thank um, you. In my experience, um, analytics are super, super important. The one thing that I've been noticing lately, though, is um, analytics of people who are doing metrics and you know, I mean, all of the different kinds of um, kind of user feedback information we can get, especially in social, mobile, casual gaming. Um, are, are coming from um, a little bit different disciplines than, than we're used to. I come from a creative background and you know come, come to marketing from a creative background. A lot of these people, for instance, I was just looking at um, some jobs today that were looking for people who are media buyers. Media buyers. Um, if you're familiar with media buying, and you know, in the olden days when I first started in advertising, a media buyer was someone who you know would buy space in magazines, and then they eventually were buying space online. But they're taking these people with these same exact kind of skills and putting them toward the utilization of network metrics and analytics to to um, to figure out how to do in-game ads and sidebar ads and these kinds of different kinds of um, ad um, uh, monetization uh, revenue models. And it's it's very interesting interesting to see that um, it's almost like the marketing portion of games with social mobile casual has really expanded. I see um, jobs that are looking for people with MBAs in, in math, and not MBAs, but masters in, in, or degrees in math, degrees uh, database managers, people who have really, really super, what I consider to be technical backgrounds that I'm not familiar with in the marketing PR or advertising realm um, doing those kinds of jobs. And I think that's a really, really interesting thing um, with social mobile casual games. If you are that person who's really been a database person, who's really been a media buy, who's really been a metrics person, there is room for you in marketing games where in five, ten years ago you would not be in this you would not be in that department. Another question? Uh, mind if I throw in two quick words about oh, analytics? Sure, sure. Uh, for public relations, uh, as you were saying, it's primarily handled in-house by the developers, but we will use analytics when we're uh, tagging keywords in a press release. Uh, I primarily use Google AdWords keyword tool, and you'd be amazed the amount of words that you will find. Like, you'll find one word that everyone's using, uh, it's high volume of use by people they're tagging their press releases with, and it only has like half a million monthly searches, when a very similar word nobody's using it and it gets five times as many searches. Uh, going back uh, to the previous uh, question that Sue posed to us about what I'm looking for in the interview, uh, you really got to come across with social skills in the interview process uh, to
for public relations, you have to be able to relate to uh, developers, uh, no, to developers, to the editors at the media outlets that we contact. You have to be able to build a relationship. If you don't come across as confident as somebody who's friendly, who can start up a conversation with anybody in the room, then that's probably not going to be somebody that we'll be hiring. Can I throw something in? Sorry. Um, yes, this is a good point. I've been in the video game industry for 15 years, working very much on client side. Most of my work for many years was with production teams, producers, developers, programmers, game designers, level designers. And um, the people who are in marketing and PR especially are a different animal in terms of personality. You can be a, P you can be a programmer and be a yes, no, I don't know kind of person. You cannot be that in marketing. You need to be an outgoing personality, you need to be a public speaker, you need to be somebody who is a spokesperson and a mouthpiece for a company. So it's a it's a good place if you are comfortable standing in front of people. I mean, you know, part of the, the value that I add to companies is I'm not afraid to go in front of a group of people and talk about stuff, even if I don't know about it. Um, <laughs> I'll just make it up. But um, that's that's the kind of personality that you need to have in this field. And, you know, however, if you don't have that kind of personality and if you're more of a, of a reserved person, there's a lot, a lot of jobs in brand management, in um, um, uh, who are looking at who are looking at actually markets and doing analysis about you know how how um, campaigns are going to be run. Those are where those jobs are. But a lot of times, that more of the senior level people, especially social, mobile, casual, are really really outgoing spokespeople who really need to be all about relationships, not only within the company but especially externally. I have nothing else to add. <laughs> I'm just going to comment from a CEO level is that, uh, as Rob said, we look for people that are good on their feet because they're going to have to get on the phone and they're going to have to talk to people and they're going to have to sell themselves across the phone. Um, but most people coming in as young new hires only have a certain amount of that, a certain amount of experience. So our entire training program is geared to helping people become the spokesperson the more outgoing person, the person who, who has the ability to sell. And so the, poli the um, actually, the policy, we have a policy within the agency, the first day you learn, the second day you teach. It means that you learn something and you turn around and you teach someone else and that's development. And everyone on my staff from the most entry level and up will do trainings, will do PowerPoint presentations to us as part of our training programs to help them develop the skills to become more articulate. Any other questions? Yes. Hi, uh, I to know you speak up loud so the back can hear you. Uh, I wanted to know what advice would you have for someone who wants to get into the gaming industry who might be coming from another industry. Like, uh, for me, my example is I most of my experience is in the automotive industry, but I really love games in the industry. Can you all hear him? Yes. Right. But I just want to know, like, how do you? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you guys are looking for people who have experience. Well, like, I'd like to start, if I could just start with a question. I just came from Penny Arcade Expo, um, where I ran a, a panel actually like this, and there were 600 people in the room, and somebody said that. And they said, if you love games, everybody else, or, I'm sorry, the way that they said it was, the problem with just loving games is that everybody in this entire room loves games. And probably not everybody in this room is necessarily going to go into the game industry, but at Penny Arcade they were. Just think about it. Every single person in that room could raise their hand and say, I love games, and it didn't qualify them as doing anything. So the advice that they gave, the panel gave up there was, so what are you doing to learn more about what you would do in games? Are you coming to meetings like this? Are you developing a portfolio of something, like writing samples, or art, or, or programming, or something, some aspect of games that you can do based on your talent to get in? Uh, I'll let the other panel answer some of those, too. Yeah, well, I mean, I kind of feel like that's a private conversation to have with one of us afterwards, because it depends on what you do in automobiles, but... Mostly marketing and journalism. Well, let me let me just say that the head of a largest, probably the largest public relations agency in Los Angeles, came from the automotive um, in games, came from the automotive industry. She was in marketing. She took an internship with us. She learned how to do it. She went up from there. Yeah, we'll find agencies that do automotive and gaming stuff and say like, look, I'm interested in this. Like, I would work here, you know, for you know, if I could also work in that department. Or I mean, there's lots of ways, but. Um, Find the way the things that cross over, exploit those things, show off the stuff you're doing in your free time to break into another industry. Expect that you're going to have to, like when I was a VP and then I had to go back to a PA, that's, I mean, it's, 
it's kind of ego ball busting, you know, it's not great. But if you really love it and you, you'll you rise back up and you'll show your enthusiasm, but just find the things that translate and as best you can and meet as many people as possible. Resumes, electronically, you're, I just really don't feel like you're ever going to get a job doing that. You need to meet people, you need to show your enthusiasm, and then they'll remember you, and the more they see you, then, you know, then opportunities open up. But like you said, you're really making a career change, so you're going to have to start at the bottom and work your way up. Find something that would take you as an internship in the job you want to do. For me, I, for me, I found one of the most useful things to um, be respected as a video game industry professional is to know what you're talking about. And um, a lot of gamers think they know what they're talking about, but they don't know what they're talking about to people like us. They, um, being a gamer and being from a consumer side, blah, 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 I love this and this and this and it's so much fun. Blah, blah. That is not a game industry attitude. Um, in order to know what you're talking about from a way that we can actually respect you is you need to read the trades. Gamesutra.com, um, Industry Gamers used to be my favorite, and they just switched to Game Biz Daily, which, uh, but anyway, there's a, there's a bunch of them. There's, 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 there's a number of really, really important daily newsletters. I get five or six of them. I skim two or three of them every day. I read the articles that I'm interested in, and the fact is that, I mean, because of I've been doing this for years, pretty much anybody can bring up a topic in the game industry, and I will have read an article or at least a headline and a blurb about it and I will know what I'm talking about. And that makes you seem like a game industry professional. Even if you come from, from an, another area, you're not a gamer coming from another area. Because the fact is that this is a small industry, I mean, that is the new newest rock stars of the world. How many kids want to be rock stars versus how many kids want to be game developers? It's extremely, extremely competitive. So to have co people come to us as they do constantly from a gamer perspective, from a consumer perspective. We don't have time for that because you know what? There's this, another freaking consumer like two feet away walking down the street. We need people who are, who are familiar with what's going on in the industry from a professional um, perspective. They understand what's going on with the console console revolution, or the actual console revolution is over, but the console change. They understand what's going on in social mobile casual. They understand about the expansion of, of the market. They understand about what's going on with the fact that distribution has really, really changed the entire industry completely in the last few years. They need to know about those things. So when those conversations come up, you can seem like a person in the, in the know, as opposed to a gamer who, who just, oh, I love games so much, please, please, please give me a chance. And I'm sorry, but there's another 10 million people on the planet who, I love games so much, and I just, please give me a chance, but they aren't willing to put forth the effort to actually be a professional in the industry. So you and anybody else can subscribe to Game Sutra Daily and all of these different daily talk. I mean, there's so many of them that are really good. Just start with Game Sutra is, 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 uh, because it has a very open community of blogs. It has a lot of different things you can get involved with as jobs, and it really helps you to really know what's going on in the industry, what the trends are, what the change are, what people are afraid of, what they're excited about, and that way, when you're talking Talking to people, you don't seem like a gamer, you seem like a professional. <laughs> in your job, apply gamification to your your current job. Try to bring in game elements in what you're currently doing. So when you do talk to people and be like, you know, I tried to apply that stuff to my current job and like maybe a driving app of some sort, reach out to developers, talk about ideas, get excited. That's another way. You know what gamification uh, is because you read the articles about yeah. it, you know what the uh, Belinda is suggesting that you learn on the trade side. I don't know, maybe we're not giving you credit. Are you reading some of the game media now? Or even well, the started to start slowly. Uh, I've been going to the for the last four years. Right. So when you get on that list again, you start to get a lot of emails from them. Right. Well, I think her point was if you can learn about the industry, it's valuable. I mean, for instance, I am not a gamer. I, have, I do not play games at all, but I could surprise most people. I could, I mean, I could fool most people. They would think so the way I can talk about games. That's what she's saying. Um, and you might think about applying your own skill, which is marketing or writing. If you read the, if you read the, the enthusiast sites, which you might if you love games, like if you read IGN, then go and look and see what somebody is writing on IGN about a game that's just come out. And then go read what they're writing at GameSpot and GameSpy and, and maybe the specialized sites 
about that game too and think about how the PR person placed that story, what they were selling, what is the key element of that story, and look at what advertising has done for that game. And study from your own field of interest how it's done in the game industry against one product, just like against one model of car that would be introduced from your car company. So that you're thinking about how to apply what you know from the auto industry into the game industry. Marketing is marketing is marketing. You just need to know the industry. And you could come up and talk to us afterward. Is there someone else who has another question? Okay, here. I have a question, and maybe you could speak to this. Um, I've, I've run departments in the post production, um, I would say, expert, uh, editor, post supervisor, and things of that nature. All around, up. all around promotional advertising. Um, and I'm curious when you apply for a job right now. I'm looking at the game industry. I love games. I play games, of course. And um, I'm wondering, okay, well, I've had all these jobs. I've had various levels. What do I put on the resume if I'm going in for an entry-level position in games? Do I include all my super expertise, or do I just tailor it for exactly what that is? And I ask, is it valuable to have uh, the larger uh, seat? Yeah, or is it more valuable for you as an employer to look for this home. So, I mean, One of the things that was said at PAX was try to develop a portfolio of what you do, but do it in the game industry. Like I said, if you're an artist, try drawing characters for a game. If you're in production, try producing something that could be used in the game industry. If you're a programmer, you know, program a little mobile game. Try something that shows your background that says I'm at least trying to apply this to a new industry. And then what you said is if I'm applying for an entry level job, then I think that goes on your cover letter. You say, I have 10 years of experience that I'm willing to start over because I think with a couple of years under my belt in an industry I'm very passionate about, I can suddenly begin to recapture my 10 years of experience because that's what happens. You take, it takes a year or two for you to make a transition to an entirely new industry, and then your maturity and your background and everything helps you catch up. And specifically about editors and Final Cut people um, that want to move into this, I would find agencies that specifically do that kind of work. I can't see my dude. I would find agencies that specifically do that work, and say if you don't have any action game trailers, you might have a car spot that was really action-y, or you might have other stuff just to say like here's my action genre here's my puzzle genre like any you know so try to kind of pigeonhole it in situations and another thing is to do your own projects like I really love it when somebody recuts the shining to look like it's a comedy or you know like if you do something creative that's like in the field that you're like I totally recut the Forza commercial that was on there with you know cars and my kids like you know, you know, have you ever seen the Avengers that they did like in their backyard? They did they did shot for shot the trailer. Like if somebody did something like that that was clever and fun, that kind of brought a little bit about the industry and you applied what you had done in the past, anything you can apply to it, just find out how it's relevant and highlight that. But really just start with places that do trailers. I will take the resume. When I leave. Other questions? Okay. Hi, I'm representing so the shy, a little louder. the shy introverted game developer types who are already in the industry. Um, do you have any advice for resources we should be consulting for making the transition into marketing beyond, you know, um, like the real marketing books? Why do you want to leave development and go to marketing? Because I'm passionate about advertising. Maybe okay, what about your mentor program? Oh, you can go online. You can go that. Um, well, Women in Games International has a program called Game Mentor Online. It's an online program where we actually have a online software, a website of dedicated. It's called uh, uh, Cronus.gmo. If, if you Game Mentor Online.org, we'll get you there. And um, we will uh, hook up proteges with mentors in the field that are in their area. For instance, I just finished. Um, working with, I think it's a four-month program with a woman who's in uh, actually New York City who has a background in marketing and is a hardcore gamer and big on games and um, you know she wants to take her marketing experience and really bring it into the game industry and you know we worked together I talked to her about what she was doing I talked to her about you know we would, we would meet weekly kind of over Skype and so forth and I would look at what she was doing and I would try to focus it toward the game industry and, and help her with that and there are people who are available to, to help with that. Um, 
Um, your general question, though, is, you know, say you're, you're more of a sh quiet, shy, game developer person who wants to go into marketing. Um, probably more money in marketing, um, eventually. Um, <laughs> um, What's money? <laughs> What's money? Yeah, well, uh, you know, if you're, a, if you're an indie developer, I don't know if you know. Um, but um, it, it, the fact is that it, uh, there's an interesting hierarchy in the game industry. Le uh, you know, C-level, legal, production, art, programming, art, CSQA. Um, and marketing is up there with production. So, I mean, we're not the highest. But we're not. We're definitely not on the low end um, in terms of, of, of finances. Um, it's uh, that's an interesting. That's a very interesting thing because I've almost always heard the opposite of that. That people get into marketing because they want to get into development. Um, I I almost think it would be easy because. Um, <laughs> hey, okay, she's saying no. Um, you know, the, the industry is title driven. The industry is rock star driven. So if you could leverage the experience that you've had so far and the work that you've had so far and really talk about titles and talk about traction and talk about team, you know, the three T's of, of the game industry, title traction and, I mean, not technology traction and team are the three T's. But, um, you know, really talk about, like, well, these, these are the things that I've done and I really believe that they, they um, will translate or be leveraged into this other area and talk about things you've done in the marketing area and or maybe some ideas you have for the marketing area um, it's interesting though like my, my first question would be would I recommend you for client side agency side PR side I mean it's kind of an interesting question as to where I would recommend you to, to look because I'm not clear are you want brand management are you looking for advertising I mean what do, what do you really want to do where can we look to find out well, I would say that um, you need to think about it really seriously to be sure you want to because marketing people can't be shy. Okay, so you're going to have to change your whole modus operandi. And if you really want to do it, there's probably some of us that would have the patience to help you because we would die for people that are really good technically. That's one thing, you know, especially, in, I would say, I mean, off the top of my head, for somebody who's got a more of a shy mentality and who's got more of a development mentality, especially if you're either in um, game design, um, level design, art, or programming, I think that you would have a, a better personality toward brand management or product management, where you'd be able to work with a certain brand and build it over time, monetize it across um, several different areas. Um, Transmedia is the big thing. Transmedia is where we can take our Call of Duty brand or our whatever brand and sell it all over the world and every different. I mean, we're doing it great with Angry. I think I think Angry Birds. Um, what is this Angry Birds commercial that's totally unrelated to Angry Birds? It's like Cheetos or some silly thing. Pistachios. Pistachios. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's interesting. That's transmedia for video games. That's a great thing. So, I mean, you know, if we can bring in uh, so many other brands into other areas, that's the greatest thing. But it almost sounds like that that's, to me, it's off the top of my head would be an interesting thing. And brand managers don't always have to be the most outgoing people. I mean, they do have to get on the, the telephone. They do have to have relationships with vendors. They do have to work with teams. But they're not necessarily going to be on the front lines um, as 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 much of spoke person, he's not at a, at, a, at an entry level level, you know, entry level place. And the thing about it is, over the course of your career, your personality is going to change, and you're going to come out of your shell, and you're going to get more confidence, and it's going to be, you're going to be up, uh, sitting up here telling me how to, you know, run my life. So, um, <laughs> you know, hopefully, because I need it. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, anyway, it, I really think that it's it, you, there's a lot of stuff that you could do, and just leverage your current skills in other areas. But what you need to do is find out more about what exactly the opportunities are and and where you fit and this is this is my general I mean seriously if someone asked me general information about jobs my big thing is do what you like and what you're good at not what you think would be cool or really fun to do because you are going to be banging your head against the wall to try to do something that's cool and fun to do that you don't like it doesn't come easy to for you because there's going to be someone sitting right next to you who that thing comes easy to and they're a natural at it and you're going to be competing against them 
do what you like and what comes easy to you and figure out a way to make that work for you in, in your career. And so that's what I would look at if I were you. What do you like? What comes easy for you? What are the opportunities and how can you put those things together with what experience that you've had? Yeah. My advice for anything like that is find the job that you want, look at the job qualifications, and move your ass in that direction. Yeah. My, um, I was told early in my career that I was the most extra extroverted, shy person you'd ever met. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. You've been a great audience. We're finishing at 8, and appreciate you all coming. Yeah.